Hi there, YouTube land, Dan here from Geek Ass Radio, doing another comic book haul video. This is where I go through my recent pickups for this week, and this is a stacked week. A lot of comic books coming out, a lot of new books, a lot of new series that are just beginning or in the early stages, so there's a lot to be excited about this week. Probably the biggest week I've had so far doing this, and it all actually starts with uh, our little Marvel preview, uh, which is a great little introduction into books that are coming out and all that great stuff. So, um, uh, with a nice little Venom number seven cover on the front and spider Genin on the back there seems to be a lot going on in the world of marvel you have spider Genin, you have deception you have uncanny x-men coming back we have uh also the infinity war going on so uh it's not like one major event it's just a bunch of little minor events i guess in a way so a lot of books to keep up with. I don't know how many of them I will, uh, but we'll see. I don't know. Hopefully Marvel has been doing some good stuff with Fresh Start. I hope they don't kind of ruin that by going too crazy with things. But going to this week's books, starting with another book coming back, uh, Sandman uh, has makes its return uh, to the pages of, I guess, Vertigo. It is it is actually is Vertigo. I wasn't sure if they were going to do Vertigo or Black Label or one of the other million different imprints. But no, Sandman is finally coming back. Uh, I've read a little Sandman. I've not read a, a, a lot of Sandman. So I go into this with a little bit of apprehension just because I don't know how much uh, this will tie into past Sandman stuff. It's probably one of the biggest holes in my fandom. I've read the first volume or two, um, but I have not you know read, read all especially some of the spinoffs and things of that nature. But I'm excited for it. I thought, it, you know, I'm excited they're bringing back some of these creators and some things that DC are trying. Um, so, and I really like that cover. There's like 18,000 covers for this, uh, as often is the case. And it's hard to pick just one, so I ended up going with that one. Uh, also, keep, that keeps talking about a lot of covers. Uh, Superman, is it Superman? It's hard to tell, rem remember if it's Superman or Action Comics, they go back and forth. But Superman number two is out. Uh, I think it's the Adam Hughes cover. I, I got the that cover for the first one, so I thought it'd stay consistent with the second one. Um, but I do like that cover. It's, pre it's pretty interesting. Uh, and I, I, Bendis, I think, is find, finding his groove with Superman. I, I like Superman number one. It was okay. Action Comics 101 and 102. 102, I think, was the best Superman comic that Bendis has written uh, so hopefully you know, that'll continue moving forward with with uh, this title so I, I thought Man of Steel had some rough goings but now that the things are a little bit more focused it's greatly improved overall um, speaking of greatly improving or at least being quite quite good the Amazing Spider-Man the Amazing Spider-Man number three with Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley uh, you know I've been loving this this book I didn't love the second issue as much but I thought the introduction of the first issue was a lot of fun. Ryan Otley's work has been phenomenal, and Nick Spencer's voice for Spider-Man is certainly there. Uh, now, seeing Spider-Man and Peter Parker on the same cover does get you get, have a little bit of clone clone saga nightmares coming up, and hopefully we're not entering that territory. I'm not exactly sure what, what what's happening here, but uh, I, I'm liking what they're doing with it, so hopefully it's not going to be anything of that nature. Maybe it's not what we expect it to be. We'll see. Uh, one of the books, probably the one of the top two books I'm most excited about. This is one of them. Um, that's Hot Lunch Special, uh, number one. This comes from Aftershock Comics. And I don't know much about these creators. I've read some of their stuff. I know, um, I think they worked on the Quantum Woody series previously and things of that nature. Um, but I just love the one. These covers have been phenomenal. Actually, I was trying to get the variant cover, which I think I liked a little bit more, but my shop didn't have it. Uh, but it sounds very Coen Brothers-esque. It's this kind of crime drama taking place in Midwest. Uh, what really sold me was the, the preview description of it. And I'm like, this sounds really interesting. I've really enjoyed a lot of what Aftershock has been doing. Um, and like, they've had a lot of horror books and things around that realm, but it seems like they're expanding upon that, doing a crime book like this. So it had a, not, speaking of Vertigo, it seemed to have like a 90s Vertigo th feeling to it, uh, I from what I could tell. So I'm really excited to uh, read this. Um, and, you know, hopefully it lives up to my expectations. Hopefully I'm not, you know, making it too high of a bar so that I won't be able to meet it. Meet it. But uh, another Aftershock book is Relay. Uh, Relay number two. This is by Zach Thompson, story by Donnie Cates, uh, and art by Andy Clark. I did a review of the first issue that you can check out, and I enjoyed it. I thought it, it, I thought the combination of Donnie Cates and Zach Thompson it was a cool combination. Donnie Cates is doing the more overall story, where Zach Thompson, I think, is doing more of the direct scripting. Uh, very high, very Philip K. Dick-esque type of science fiction adventure. Um, gets into a lot of philosophy. Um, it's a thinking man's science fiction, so if that's something you enjoy, I think uh, you'll, uh, you might pick this up. It deals a lot with almost the religious beliefs of, of that time with this uh, 
these planet explorers and uh, but not actual any real religion that exists you know it's one created within the book um but i i found it really fascinating and i really like what zach thompson's been doing a lot with his indie stuff heard for all the scent which came out this week as well uh, i really enjoyed a lot of even his cable run currently um so i think he's really the drag last year was fantastic and this continues to be really good so I highly recommend that. It may not be everyone's cup of tea because it is a little wordy. It's slow moving, at least the first issue was. But if that kind of you know stuff you like regarding science fiction, you might really enjoy it. Uh, not a book that's not slow moving at all um, is Farmhand. And Farmhand number two has come out. Uh, this is from Mom Guillory, who is coming from Chu. And it's interesting now that writer and, and artist of Chu all have new series. Uh, Rob Guillory has this series. And we had Leviathan last week. Didn't really like Leviathan all that much. Uh, but I've been loving Farmhand. I loved the first issue. Thought it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, Guillory style is so unique and fun, and uh, there's like a twistedness to it as well. Uh, so if you really like, you know, if you like Chew, I think this actually feels much more like Chew than uh, Leviathan does. Probably because obviously the art, but the sense of humor is there too. Uh, but it, it seems like he's really building into some story as well. Uh, one of the books I've been liking, though I know it's not one that's uh, flying off the shelves regarding just how much it's selling, is Exiles number six. Uh, I I love the Exile series. I've had had since it early inceptions in the early two thousands, uh, and I've been liking what Sully and Amon and um, well, this is a new artist I believe, uh, Rob Reese is doing the art for this book. So, uh, which is actually you know what? Looking at this, they did a nice little uh, in memory of Steve Ditko, and I didn't know they were doing that. That's actually really cool. Um, they did that. Uh, but the artist in this is Rod Reese. Yeah, like I mentioned, the guest artist uh, for this issue um, going into the world of, uh, I guess, the Old West. Is that Magneto? I'm not exactly sure. But that's what I, what I really love about the Exiles books is that each issue, you, you, you don't even know what world you'll be in, what, what the dilemma will be. It just makes it so open-ended. There ends up being a lot of creativity. Um, I love how there is a connection to the, the past uh series with with blink as well and we saw other characters pop up here and there so i, I don't know how much longer this will last because i know it's not a huge seller but if you enjoy the original exiles i think you know you would enjoy this as well uh, and probably the book i am most excited about this week is black badge number one uh, because this is from tyler jenkins and matt kent who brought us uh, grass kings which i think is one of the most underrated series Period. I mean, it was nominated for an Eisner, and I was really hoping it would win for Best New Series, uh, but it didn't. Black Bolt won, which is another really good book, which is also underrated as well. But uh, I, I thought Grass Kings was ph phenomenal. It ended this year, and its final issue was one of the best issues of the year, in my opinion. It wraps everything up nicely, but it also like adds so much to the story. Uh, so I don't really know much more of this. But it seems to be about some sort of scout troop. Um, but uh, Tyler Jenkins and Matt Kent, they, they just complement each other really well. Uh, Matt Kent, you know, who's a writer and artist at the same time. Uh, Jenkins' art is similar to Kent's, but it's a little bit, I think, more more directly defined. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what, what this entails, um, what type of story we have here. And it's, it's really up, you know, it seems to fit my sensibilities really well. So I'm super excited for this book. And it's really nice cardstock for this cover. So I, they're really putting, I think, a good effort in keeping this book nice and Put, well put together. I really wanted to get the Jeff Lemire cover for this, um, but they unfortunately again didn't. They didn't have it. So some really good, some really good chart. Man, some really ph phenomenal coloring in that as well. So I'll be doing a review of many of these books. Definitely uh, that is uh, coming up shortly. So if you want to get more in depth thoughts, you'll be able to see that. Another series I've been liking a good amount, uh, Death of Glory. Uh, Death of Glory number we're up four now. It's been a lot of fun. Rick Remender. Um, fantastic art by Bengal. Uh, it's not to me. It's not to the level of Remender's best stuff. Like it's not nearly as good as Deadly Class or Black Science, but it could get there eventually. Uh, things are building slowly, building. The Remenderness of this keeps coming out more and more with each issue. So excited to see what issue three holds. It's a very twisted tale. It started off rather straightforward, and then by issue two and three, it, things got rather nasty rather quick. So. Man, I told you, a lot of books this week. A lot of books to talk about. And we still got a couple more. Uh, next is Catwoman, number two. Uh, fantastic cover by uh, Joelle Jones. Uh, and what I, I, uh, there, there was a really good variant cover for this, but I went with this, uh, with this cover because I feel like it gives you more knowledge of what actually the story will be about. But, you know, with all the talk about Batman 50, I, it seemed to, like... Uh, 
pushed Catman, Catwoman number one to the side and people kind of, I don't think, paid enough attention to it. I, it, it was a good issue, um, but I'm just excited for Joel Jones being able to showcase her talent. She's, to me, one of the best creators, most exciting creators in comics right now. Lady Killer is a phenomenal series. Um, and I'm, it's awesome that she's getting a mainstream title like this in, on DC. Uh, and I, you know, I don't know much about Catwoman. Like I never, I've read some of her series. I've been keeping up with Batman, but seeing that um, Joel Jones is able to kind of take the character in her own direction. And today's, I guess, National Cat Day. So I don't know if that was planned or not, but hey, it works out really well. So um, excited to see where this is going. And it's so rare to see a comic book artist and or a comic book creator both being artist and writer in a mainstream book. So uh, you know, we barely get the same artist from issue to issue. So that's it's very it's an anomaly. But hopefully, the success of book, this book can be successful. We can get more of it. Um, I just have to give you know, those creators time to do that. Uh, and last, but of course not least, probably the biggest book, the most talked about book. If you've been following this channel, you've seen a lot of my videos about classic Fantastic Four issues. Well, you know, with that, we have the finally the return of the Fantastic Four. It's the pages of Marvel Comics with Mar Fantastic Four number one or number 646. So uh, we're, before we know it, we'll be up to 650 and 700 for sure. Dan Slott and Sarah Pacelli uh, taking their their reigns at this uh, at, at this book. Uh, I'm super excited to see what they do with Fantastic Four. I'm super happy that it's back. I'm a little disappointed in the, in the fact that it seemed that Marvel 2 and 1 was leading into to this. So it's weird that that hasn't yet. Um, I don't know. I know Marvel 2 and 1 is continuing, which is fantastic because that's been, I mean, Chip Zdarsky is really coming to its own in that story. Uh, so I don't know how this ties into it or anything like that. But um, really, but Dan Slott has me excited. He's a student of the game when it comes to comics. He knows his comics really well. He seems like a good person to put on Fantastic Four. His Silver Surfer one run is the best thing he's ever done. So I hope we can take a lot of what he did with that, the imagination, the adventure, and bring it into the pages of Fantastic Four. Uh, so we'll see. I'll be having a review of, of, of this on the site as well relatively soon. But let me know what you picked up this week. Was it a big week for you? What are you excited about? A lot of new series coming out this week. A lot of new series that are just, you know, we have Farmhand in, in number two and Catwoman number two. So it's actually a really good time to get into comics as a lot of exciting series are, you know, or early in the game. Um, but that's it for me for this week. If you want to check out more of our stuff, go to Geekcast Radio. Uh, you can check, click on, uh, there should be some stuff around here for videos that have recently come up uh, or to subscribe to this channel if you're so inclined. Uh, but that's it for me. Thanks for uh, watching and just remember, comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one.